In the world of Amazon Web Services, the IAM role is one of the most powerful identities that we should be familiar with. And that's because AWS uses it as their preferred way of performing something called permissions delegation. And remember, delegation is the process of allowing other parties to perform some sort of approved action on your behalf. This could be other users in my account, other AWS accounts, or even AWS themselves as one of the services that we frequently need to have perform actions for us on our behalf. In order to understand how roles work, we need to understand the two types of policies that go into using them. So let's imagine for a sec that I had a role that was defined here. Okay, and let's imagine that we had an identity or a person over here that we wanted to allow to use that role. The first thing that we have to recognize is that in order to do this, the user or the service or the identity has to run a command called assume role or some flavor of it. The assume role command is the part that references the role they want to assume and then actually performs the process of getting a security token with those permissions uh, enabled inside of them. So when we go to run this assume role command, we can evaluate the first policy, which is the trust policy. Okay, now the trust policy is essentially an inline policy on the role that grants permissions to some other party to perform the assume role call. Now you do wanna recognize that the assume role permission uh, from the secure token service, it still needs to be assigned to that user to give them permission to even run that command in the first place, but that's not attached to the role and we'll talk more about that later on. Once you have the role successfully assumed, that's where the second big policy kicks in and that is your permissions policy. And as you might imagine, this is the policy that grants some permissions to our special little user or service over here. So the whole idea being that generally you would write a small least permission policy for the user or the service, and then have them assume the role when they need to elevate their privileges. Keeping in mind that for many AWS services, there isn't any elevating of privileges. They only have the permissions that you grant them in the role. So just to kind of recap, regardless of where you're building your roles, you're always gonna have two policies. The trust policy controls who's allowed to use the role, and the permissions policy controls what sort of actions they can perform once they've assumed that role. Something we'll talk a lot more about in future identity and access management lessons. See you next time.